DeFi 2.0. It's here. You need to know what it is. You need, you need to know what DeFi is. A lot of you probably don't even know that. And the reason it's important is because in life, it's always when you see things that are new and growing quickly, you can put off learning about it and eventually you'll learn. But if you can get out ahead of that, that's how you understand what's going on in the world before other people do. That's the key to investing is knowing what's happening before everybody else. So you position yourself correctly before they get there. And so now when I first heard, oh, DeFi 2.0, I'm like, oh no, really? I just began to wrap my head around DeFi 1.0. Now I got to figure this thing out. But it's like, you know what? I don't know. What else, what else are we doing on this planet? Right? Let's learn shit. And then you get to money and you make it go up. So first thing, let's talk about what, what is DeFi? It stands for Decentralized Finance. Okay, so decentralized, if you understand the internet, hopefully you understand how the internet works, which is just a bunch of computers connected by a protocol, okay? And if you wanna route from here to here, well, you can send it, boom, boom, or, oh my God, this computer went offline. Doesn't matter. It's not the central, it, there is no center. It is de-center rely. So now we gotta go here. Okay, well, we'll go this way, boom, boom. Or, you know, this one goes down and it's like, oh, then we'll go this way. And you know, there's so many computers, there's always a way, it's decentralized and it can't be killed Unless you kill all the computers, right? In, in, in Ethereum and Bitcoin, there's like 10,000 of these nodes. So you can't kill it unless you kill, if there's 10,000, you gotta kill about 997 of them, uh, you know, and then it's pretty much done. So that is decentralized. So now decentralized finance. Well, what is finance? It's just the basic banking shit, right? trading assets, trading financial products, like when you buy stocks or you buy, uh, you know, and, or, and you hold dollars, and then the banking, you deposit it, you earn interest. What, what do you do with your money, right? All of those things is finance. Well, now we're moving those from the banking system. When you send money in the banking world, you have your money in Bank of America, it's not decentralized. If your money's in Bank of America and, and Bank of America goes down, there's no all these other points and you can route around it. If you're in Bank of America and it goes down, you're down because that is your center point. And all of the banks are around the central bank. If the central bank goes down, that's why Russia's shitting its pants right now because they just blocked off the central bank. If the central bank isn't working, all the other banks aren't. It's not decentralized. It is not as resilient. So, uh, so DeFi takes all the basic banking things that you know and love or know and hate, right? Um, and move them to a decentralized platform. So instead of Coinbase or E-Trade, those are centralized trading platforms that you go in. Instead of using that, you might use Uniswap, okay? Maybe I'm gonna make this into two videos and, and do a continue for DeFi 2.0, leave you on you, because by the time I get to 2.0, uh, DeFi 2.0, it's we're gonna be we're gonna be deep in this thing. But let let's let's continue here. So what's the difference between Uniswap and E-Trade? Or uh, you know, even Coinbase, Coinbase trades crypto, but it's still centralized. So um, we have custodial, important word to understand. You know what custodial mean? Who, who is the custodian who holds your money? When you are in Coinbase and E-Trade, you give them, they are your custodian. They hold your money and the laws are that when you give them your money, 
Yeah, they're holding it for you. Yeah, they owe it to you. Yeah, you're like, oh, I can take it out. But legally, check the docs. Legally, it's their money now. It's not yours. It's not like a valet when you drop off your car and, and they, they take your car and, um, you know, and then they bring it back. But you don't give them title to the car, right? When you drop it off at valet, you still retain ownership. That's not what's going on in these banks. You are giving them ownership of your money. Uniswap, you don't give the money to anyone. It's in your wallet. And then you go and you just place a trade for you want to buy something for something else. It just, your wallet, if you have, you have ETH and you trade it for DAI in your wallet. One minute you have ETH and the next minute you have DAI. And when it goes through the Uniswap system, not even for a second does anyone else hold ownership of it. The only thing that holds ownership for it in a sense for a second is the protocol itself, which is based on code that is on 10,000 different computers on the decentralized system, so it cannot be stolen. You never lose custodian ship of your money. This is DeFi, a DeFi, okay? Now we also have, um, so then you have banking, uh, borrowing and lending, compound finance. What's the difference of compound finance and Bank of America. Do I still have room here? Let's go for it. So B of A. You deposit your money to B of A. What do you get? You lose custodianship of your money and they pay you no interest. Wow, what a good deal, huh? And they have all these shitty services like paper checks, which they charge your fees for. What do, you, what do we get here if we got... Compound finance, compound finance. I'm running out of room here. Okay, compound finance. When you deposit into a pool there, you deposit the money, but they don't, they can't get it. The, the compound finance is just an app. It's not, there's not, you know, anyone at compound finance who has access, who can take your money. That nobody can touch it except for you and you can pull it out at any time. 24 seven, not nine to five minus holidays and weekends. It's 24 seven, you put your money in, nobody else can take it, the government can't take it, nobody, as long as you don't lose your keys, it's another story, but uh, don't lose your keys. And guess what? They actually pay you interest. Sometimes people are like, oh, how are they paying interest? Oh, it sounds like a scam. Paying, depositing money, so that that collateral can be used for other services from people who need it and being rewarded with some sort of interest for that service has been happening for thousands of years. That is not a scam. And then, like, you think about it. it, makes sense. Why would you deposit if you're not gonna get interest? The 0% interest is part of the Ponzi that they got you caught up in. That's the fucking scam. That makes no sense. <laughs> what are they doing? With them? I mean, ask your questions about 0% interest. You know, okay? So that's DeFi 1.0. You know what? I'm going to leave you on the edge of your seat here and make you wait for tomorrow for DeFi 2.0. Um, fractional, I'll give, I'll give you a teaser, my notes, because this is, I mean, I didn't even start here, okay? So... We got uh, fractional versus collateralized. We got riskier collateral. We uh, use balance sheet to do things. We got liquidity incentives. We got strong memes. We got lock for voting. And I'm going to tell you, what is my favorite De DeFi 2.0 pick? Stay tuned for tomorrow.